Welcome back to part 2 of the Kite the OG build log. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, watch that first. Let's jump right in where we left off by extending these openings right to the edge of the fuselage. After mounting the wing back onto the fuselage, I checked to make sure that the flaperons are moving freely, and noticed the first mistake I made. The build manual from Soaring Models calls for control horns to be 23.6mm apart, which is what I set mine to as they cured. However, I took the measurement right near the bottom, while the manual actually shows it being measured at the ends of the control horns. So as a result, my control horns were glued about a millimeter or two too far apart, causing the very ends to rub against the curve of the fuselage. Since the control horns are already epoxied into place, I had to chamfer the ends of the control horns to clear the fuselage and move freely. Again, make sure you're gluing your horns 23.6 millimeters apart, measured from the ends of the horn, so you don't need to do this. I put the wing back onto the fuselage to make sure it's moving freely now, and it's okay disaster averted. For tail servos, I actually swapped out the two X08s I used in part 1 for X06s, as using four X08s in the nose would have been nose heavy. Take the single horn from the hardware pack and cut it down. We will be using the second innermost hole for the pole string installation. Now repeat for the other tail servo. For the wings, plug in the two X08s into your servo tester and center them up. Take the cross servo arm and find which orientation the longer arm sits as close to center as possible. If it cannot be exactly 90 degrees, bias the arms toward the nose, but still as close to 90 degrees as you can. Trim down the servo arm. For the wing push rods, we will be using the innermost hole. Once we're done with this side, repeat for the other wing servo as well. Roughen up the servos on the face that will be glued to the fuselage later. This will give the medium CA a much better grip of the servos so they don't pop out by accident when under use. Okay, so originally I had my servos laid out like this. We had already swapped out the tail servos for X06s for balance. The rear servos are either X08s or A08s, and the front servos are X06s. But what I realized was, and this is a big mistake, is that this layout would actually not work. So please follow the instructions and don't do what I did. The servos need to be moved forward so that the push rods can come down into the back. If it was in the back like this, the servos actually cannot go into the fuse properly, and the horns would hit the nose cone. So make sure you follow the instructions, it's basically a small battery in front, and then the tail servos goes right behind it. Behind that are the wing servos, and then the receiver all the way in the back. So because of my mistake, we had to redo these steps, so you'll see all these scruff marks as I had to remove the servos after gluing it into the wrong spot. And you'll see these slots that I've already drilled out in the wrong location. We do need to cut new slots, so just pretend the old ones aren't there. Before installing the servos, I first lay a piece of masking tape over the tray so we can mark down all the relevant details. First I mark the location of the battery. Then I mark the location of the tail servos as well as where their servo arms go.
I then draw where the slots will go based on the servo arm locations. Place the servo so the servo arms point into the fuselage, then mark the center of the slot. I then offset the center 12mm in both directions so that the slot is around 24mm long. Once that is done, using a diamond burr bit and a dremel tool, I roughly grind out the slots. Once it's roughed out, I remove the tape and proceed to clean up the slots. Switching to a ball end burr bit, I rough up the tray where the tail servos will go. As you see, the rear part of my tray is already roughed up when I did the wrong install earlier. I tape the battery to the nose as a reference point, then I test fit the servo once more to make sure there's no surprises. I clean the servo and apply some medium CA. Quickly but carefully position the servo, making sure the servo arm isn't rubbing on the sides of the slot and is free to move. Hit it with kicker. Repeat on the other tail servo. Next up, we prepare the wing servos. Note the servo arm is pointing up. Then just repeat it on the other side. And this is what it should look like once the servos are installed. Again, those two rear slots are cut in error. Disregard the servo position in this sequence, this was filmed earlier. Here we are using the carbon pushrod placed between the inside of the wing servo arm and the wing control horns to mark where to cut the slot for the pushrods to pass through the fuselage. Extend the markings like I'm doing in the video and connect it into a long slot. Don't make the slots too big, just big enough for the pushrods to pass through. If there's any rubbing, you can always go back and enlarge it a little bit. Using a burr bit on my Dremel, I start opening up the slots. This is just a rough pass, so don't get too close to the edges yet. Once I'm happy with openings, I remove the tape, then proceed to clean up the slots with a Dremel and small files. The kit comes with two sets of pushrod ends pre-bent from the factory. The left set is for the servo side, and the right set is for the wing control horns. Cut some grooves with a cutoff wheel. This will help with adhesion to the carbon pushrod. Now repeat this on the other three pieces as well. Once that is done, spray with alcohol and thoroughly wipe the pieces clean. Apply thin CA to one of the pieces that hooks to the wing and slide it into the carbon pushrod tube. Wick in a bit more CA, then spray with kicker. Place that aside and let's repeat it on the other pushrod.
Next, slide the push rods into the fuselage, and please note, the push rod ends should be pointing outwards. Now another thing I noticed is that those push rod bends at 90 degrees will not fit in the fuselage, it's just too tall. So I confirmed it with soaring models and they actually should be around 45 degrees. So I used some pliers to lessen the angle and then slipped it back into the fuselage. I hook the push rods up to the wing, then connect the wing to the fuselage. Now everything fits properly. Next, I tape the ailerons centered onto the wings. Then I take more masking tape, and this is used to mark the length of the push rods. I'm cutting the push rods so they end roughly a centimeter from the servo arms. With the lengths marked, I cut it, then file it smooth. Then I spray it down with alcohol and give everything a good wipe. I slide the front pushrod ends into the pushrods. Note, they also point outward to go into the servo arms. Now that we know everything fits together properly, I remove the pushrod ends and the tape used to hold the flap rods to prepare for the next steps. I plug one of the aileron servos into my servo tester and proceed to set it to the maximum forward position. If you've been following along how I normally install and offset my flaperons, this is a bit of a twist. On the kite, due to the way this type of control horn interacts with the fuselage, the flaperons will only move down around 45 to 50 degrees. So for the kite build, instead of offsetting the flaperon install based on the max up deflection, I'm offsetting it based on the max down deflection. Crack the ends of the carbon tube slightly when sliding on the pushrod ends. Then hook it up to the servo arms. Make sure the servo arm is in the max forward position. With one hand, hold the flaperon at its max down deflection and apply light pressure to hold it still. Then apply thin CA to the pushrod ends. Those cracks in the carbon tube we made earlier will allow the CA to wick in better. Squeeze the carbon tube tight as the CA cures and then hit it with kicker. Let's take a look at the complete deflection range of the installation. It's perfect. With the first side done, let's repeat this process on the other side. Alright, let's check the deflection on this side as well, and I think we're good to go. Remove the wing, then remove the push rods. Apply a drop of CA and adhere the end of a piece of thread there. Hit it with kicker. Add a little bit more CA along the length of the ends and wrap the entire location with thread. This will prevent the carbon tube from splitting. Once you're satisfied, apply CA along the length and cut the thread. Soak the area and all the thread in thin CA. Then hit it with kicker. Repeat this on the other end of the push rod and when you're finished, slide it back into the fuselage. Take out the other push rod and repeat this process. Okay, when you're done, slide it back into the fuselage and hook it back up to the servo arm. Now add a drop of thin CA to the ends of the push rods and we're going to hit this with kicker. So this is going to act as a keeper so that the push rod doesn't slide out. Wow, that was intense. So let's relax and slowly put the wings back onto the fuselage. 
Let's also assemble the stabilizer to the fuselage and set the model down so it's nice and level. Next, slide the fin into the pre-cut slot on the boom. Make sure it's 90 degrees to the elevator and wing, then glue it with thin CA. Once that is done, remove the wing and we'll begin installing the pole strings. First, cut two 55mm lengths of the white guide tube and set them aside. Take one of the pole string wires and take one crimp and thread it through. We're going to make the loop for the elevator. After you form a loop, thread the wire through the crimp one more time for the pigtail. This makes it much easier to fish the loop out of the fuse when it falls inside. And when that is done, crimp it with a pair of pliers and add a drop of CA on both ends for peace of mind. Insert the other end of the wire into the elevator slot and thread it forward. Slip the wire into the plastic guide tube. Then proceed to glue it onto the ballast tube. Pull the wire until the loop gets close to the elevator horn and then hook the loop onto the horn. Thread the wire to the nose and through the slot by the elevator servo. Thread the wire through the second hole on the servo arm. Then screw the servo arm screw halfway in. Connect the elevator servo to the servo tester and set it to the max forward position. Next, pull the wire so the elevator is all the way up touching the boom and then wrap the wire around the servo arm screw twice. Tighten the screw to hold the wire and when that's done, check to make sure everything is moving freely. I then cut the wire and apply some medium CA around the screw for peace of mind, hit with kicker. Now that the pole string is installed for the elevator, remove it from the fuselage. Cut a piece of masking tape and apply it to the right side of the boom by the tail mount. Then draw a line down the center of the boom around 1-2cm to two centimeters long. This is where the rudder line will come out of the fuselage. Using the cutoff wheel, I carefully cut along the line, making sure I don't make the cut too long. Then I remove the masking tape and clean up the slot with files. Thread the rudder line through the slot. Then, take the end of the wires and thread it through a crimp tube. Thread the line through the rudder control horn and then through the crimp tube again, forming a loop. Crimp the tube with pliers and add a drop of CA to the ends for peace of mind. Just like the elevator line, thread the rudder line to the nose, glue the guide tube, and attach it to the servo arm. The only difference is to have the servo arm and rudder set to center when tightening the screw. And lastly, I added the screws for the wing servos, and we're done. Thank you for tuning in to my first Kite DLG build. Don't repeat the mistakes I did, and have fun. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.